Team House with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Body language. Could you dive a little bit deeper into the culture of each of the squadrons? Because I think this part is really interesting in how each squadron in Dev Group has its own identity and how that kind of expressed itself over the years. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, there are historically the squadrons were um, red, well, the original ones were, were gold and blue, which reflected the colors of the Navy at the time. Uh, red uh, is quickly added. Uh, into it later, there is uh, gray, which are boats. There's black, and eventually silver. Th that's the rough. Uh, get it. Each then um, develops a name. They have their own flag and identity. Um, gold uh, were the Crusaders or the Knights, depending on the year that, that it shifted. Um, the uh, Red Squadron were the Redmen and had a Native American mascot with two uh, tomahawks uh, across. Uh, uh, blue are the uh, uh, pirates with the Jolly Roger uh, flag. Uh, black, which is an intelligence. Um, I actually don't know their name, but they have a, a horse with uh, with two lightning bolts. Um, and then uh, s later, silver, uh, they're the raiders. They have sort of a, a shield, but w one of everything. They've got a knife. They've got a hatchet um, and a skull face uh, to sort of reflect all of them because they were the newest of the units. The, 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 what you're asking about is really about the three, blue, gold, the, uh, and- The and, assault squadrons. Yeah, the original assault squadrons, blue, gold, and red. Um, and prior to nine, there was always a culture involved. Um, they were defined in different generations. The, uh, but there, the, the Native American subculture in the, you know, one of the traditions that in Red Squadron was to, once you were drafted into the squadron after uh, making it through selection and green team, you had to yard in. And yarding in, you had to wear a, uh, a traditional, and I don't know which tribe, Native American uh, headpiece, and then you had to, to uh, drink a yard of beer that had a, I don't know if it was, remember which hard alcohol it is at the bottom. Um, and if you could do that, you, you were in. Um, and they had a culture which was known as sort of harder, not smarter. Um, they were, their culture was you met violence with more violence. And you solved problems by being stronger and bigger, right? That was a, a, the psyche that had developed within that unit. Um, Blue uh, had, you know, different parts and, and different places. Uh, their subculture, you know, the way I really understand most of the subculture was in the kind of, um, unfortunately, the kind of atrocities and, and desecration. They each had their own kind of desecration, basically. And, and it could move around, um, but the, you know, blue used knives um, and were uh, known for skinning. Red used the hatchets. Um, gold, there's some things that I didn't put in the book uh, Sometimes it was because I didn't want to, there's enough's enough. There's only a, a certain amount of, of um, you know, some of this stuff is gruesome and, and it, it was, it, gold had a different style um, is the best way I could say it. And they had some things that they did that were pretty disturbing. What they had all in common was um, they were sort of, you know, one of the, the senior enlisted said to me, look, there, there are sort of three responses in our guys in how they experience violence. Some, their first instinct upon experiencing up close intense violence that is the business, recoil and they self-select out. And actually after Roberts Ridge, there were a lot of guys in red team that left SEAL Team 6, several who left the SEALs altogether. Um, it wasn't spoken about, it was just understood that it was, hey, it's not for me. There was another kind which fits along, you know, I think culturally um, more of the red squadron, red team, which was um, to meet violence with more violence. Mm -hmm. There was a third, which I think is the most, actually the most interesting, the hardest to write about because it, it is an outsider, which is that there were some who uh, saw art as some, I mean, violence as a sort of art, which is to say you use it the least amount possible mm -hmm. and only when necessary and you're looking for solutions to a problem. I mean, I think, by the way, it's probably common in other units, right? You, you're given a task and you're looking for a way to not kill, um, to accomplish your mission. And um, 
a lot of the the operators and the, the senior enlisted who uh, were described to me fitting in that category for whatever reason fell into blue. And I don't know, actually I can't speak to why that culture uh, within the pirates may have uh, existed. They also had, you know, they were off the rails for a couple of years. Um, they just have different, you know, it's the way they compete with each other. It's the way they differentiate from each other. And it happened organically. I, um, I mean, in some cases, I would think that, like, violence, you know, you meet violence with more violence is an appropriate solution. Um, but you're talking about not just violence, not just violence of action or, or hitting targets harder or expanding operations, but we're going into skinning. We're going into things that are, are probably not healthy expressions of of that type of violence. Yeah, and I'm not I, I'm not I'm, I'm not su I'm not suggesting that um uh meeting violence with more violence is necessarily wrong. Right. And in by any way illegal. It is, you know, as you can tell me, right? The job is one of aggression, but it is also and you know the the what everyone will tell you from SEAL Team 6 of course is is that the main skill is knowing when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive, right? right? The, the, when you dial it down to the most basic thing, it's when to shoot and when not to shoot. Right. When, to, when you're justified. The escalation this, of force. The escalation of force. Right. And so um, I think that it is on all of these things you have in, in a soft unit, you're living on a knife's edge and you need a leash. You need some kind of discipline to hold it together or, or you go to the wrong side. And I think at SEAL Team 6 in particular, they have this problem, they ride this edge, they recruit and, and select for guys who are hyper-aggressive, who look to cook, cut corners, to solve problems and, and come up with solutions. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying concept, right? right. And the problem is, is that what, and, and this is someone, this is, these are SEALs telling me this, older SEALs telling me this, that was fine prior to 9-11, but no one in the military thought about the effects of 15 to 20 years of warfare in up-close violence. Right on the, the secondary and tertiary effects for operators. Yeah, I mean, I don't think um, many of us, certainly not myself, have a problem with shooting terrorists in the face, you know, in combat. But I wanna talk about some things that I do think are problematic. Um, tell us about the bleed out videos. What was that about? Well, um, there was one uh, SEAL in particular early on uh, in Red Team who was uh, on some of the early deployments whose job was um, filming uh, after uh, the operation to identify, you know, who had been killed um, and, you know, give you know, sort of crime scene photos, if you will, uh, for headquarters and hire. And um, he took a particular glee um, in replaying the videos in their hooches, basically back at Bagram afterwards, he'd get the group together and watch the videos over and over and, and would do a sort of uh, countdown of watching pe people expire. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in and of itself, in, it, it was, it's, it's tasteless, but it's not necessarily illegal. What um, the members of SEAL Team 6, the leaders of SEAL Team 6 that I had interviewed who told me about them said was, the problem was it was a very easy to spot sign early on that there was a lust for this. There was something that was inappropriate going on in terms about of- About making snuff films? Yeah, about the, about the enjoyment <laughs> something part. Something might that, be wrong. That it was a sign that there was, a, there was something that needed to be reined in and watched closely, right? In and of itself, it may not be, you weren't gonna bring someone up on charges on it, but it was a, it was a sign that there was a problem and no one would say anything about it. They were sort of laughing and, and, it, and it kept on going for, you know, it went on for about two deployments, I think. And that seal later was kicked out because he, he um, he struck a teammate, he, he got drunk at, uh, on deployment and pistol whipped one of his teammates. So, you know, and then the CIA hired him. Um, what about, you mentioned in the...